Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the 31st episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 19th of May. As usual, this show is recorded on Monday prior, so the 18th of May. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm your host for today's show, coming from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. What are we going to do? We will have our usual overview of the rotations that we have seen in asset classes and sectors last week. And I will be picking a few charts that I think are interesting enough to keep a closer eye on in both segments, so in asset classes and in sectors. Then I will do an update on the use of beta for offense versus defense for risk assessment. I have updated that spreadsheet with the latest data and also done the same exercise for the equal weight sectors. And that's a pretty interesting, um, you got some pretty interesting differences there that I want to share with you. And then in the last segment of the show, we'll go over the outstanding pair trades, take a look at those and um, present how I want to go forward in the future with that segment of pair trade ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with Sector Spotlight. The rotation for asset classes uh, for last week shows uh, a really weak week for real estate with minus 8.3% and uh, also for stocks minus 2.6%. That was not a good week. At the top of the list we find corporate bonds and, um, and government bonds. And if we look at the rotation we see an image that is becoming quite familiar with stocks still at the right hand side, the positive side of the RRG and basically all others on the left hand side. The one that is uh, giving a really clear direction is real estate. It's inside the lagging quadrant and traveling further into it um, confirms the minus 8.3 that we saw last week. The other tails are a little bit more mixed. The, um, the five trading days that we see here is, is literally the last trading week. And if we go back five trading days, one, two, oh, whoops, one, two, three, four, five. And this is the end of the previous week. Then we saw that stocks just started to curl up. Um, basically, you know, giving a little bit of hope and, and showing some strength there. And you can see what, um, and, and we saw the, the opposite happening in government bonds um, uh, and the dollar and to a lesser extent with, um, with commodities. But if you see what happened in the last five days, one, two, three, four, five, we see that at the beginning it was quite good and then we had a very weak last few days. Um, I'm recording this on Monday, as you know, so uh, the market is open already for a couple of hours. And the stock started off uh, very strong this week, which makes it very hard to, uh, to put everything in perspective, uh, at least on a daily chart. So if we switch this one to a weekly, we probably get a little bit more perspective, a little quieter chart. And what we see here is that that little improvement that we had two weeks ago, if I, if I toggle this back one, two weeks, we, we saw that the tail for stocks started to move upward. And despite the weak performance of last week, that longer term relative image continues to improve, albeit slightly, it's still in the lagging quadrant, but you compare it with real estate, it's a big difference. So, so stocks are picking up on the uh, JDK RS momentum scale <clears throat> and not losing too much anymore on the ratio scale, which is a sort of early positive. On the other hand, we see government bonds and corporate bonds rolling over uh, and, and starting to lose momentum, just like high yield, but that started already uh, a little bit more uh, early. I want to quickly look at the, uh, the chart of stocks because you see that we, we are, you know, we set that high already three weeks ago, which was at uh, 65.92 for ITOT. And the relative strength line is struggling with this old support level now starting to act as resistance. Let's change this to SPY because that probably resonates a little bit better with most people. But the image is 
quite the same. So we have this overhead resistance level here with that high set 294.88 uh, in the week of 27 April and we're now 294.88. Look at that. It's exactly the same number. So we are pushing against that resistance level. The RS momentum is already uh, curling upward and that, that's causing the, the tail on the RRG to move upward. I, I am going to watch that previous high in stocks at um, 294.88. This is, this is a weekly chart, so we can't basically say anything until Friday's close. But that 294.88, let's round it off at 295. If the S&P can maintain, can go above and maintain levels above 295, I think we should take that as a positive sign and that there is a little bit more upside for stocks uh, to come. And if we translate that back to an RRG, it will probably mean that stocks, ITOT or S&P will hopefully, if, if that continues, start to curl up and move back to the leading quadrant. If we move to the sectors that make up the S&P 500, we see relatively long tails last week, I have to say. Uh, and, and a big gap in performance between the top performer of last week was healthcare up 1% uh, while the S&P was down 2.1 and energy was down more than 7 just like real estate so um, the difference the gap between the the leader and the lagger is more than 8% 8.2% it's quite a big gap if we look at the rotations then very clearly the rotation of energy um, catches our attention because that was the, the, the weak one and it is the longest tail that we see on the chart. And so do, let's say, utilities, staples, um, healthcare moving here. And we see technology, communication services rolling over. But what I am watching is the length of the tail. So the, the weakness here for energy, industrials, financials is right here. Let me highlight it for you. So here's financials industrials, uh, real estate. These are all um, weaker. They're, they're heading into the lagging, further into the lagging quadrant. And they, are, they have relatively long tails. And if we look at technology and communication services, they're inside leading, they're rolling over, which is not good as such. But the tails are very short, relatively short, which means that uh, my judgment call, because it is a judgment call, is that these, uh, these, this loss of momentum for these two sectors is probably a little bit more temporarily, um, uh, temporary in nature than the loss uh, that we see in energy, because that's, that's a pretty big move. Um, if I, let's quickly look at um, uh, two or three charts. So the, the energy chart is one that's definitely worth our attention because of the big tails. And uh, let me put this into weekly because that matches the, the chart that we have on the right here. And then if we see energy, uh, it, it, is, it was good. It, it's, it's been moving up, but it is so far from the 100 level. It's still below 80 that the, the odds for this one to continue through improving and into leading are super, super low. I've, I, I can't imagine that that's going to happen. And if I then look at the price chart, I see a massive overhead resistance area and a huge gap that we're now trying to close, sort of. So for, I think that for the time being, the upside potential for energy is probably limited to somewhere in the region of 41, maybe a little bit of an overshoot, 42, but that's probably it. Then the gap is closed. We're in that massive resistance area range and look at the trend in that relative strength line that is still very much down and the upside that we're seeing here in the momentum is because it stopped declining so fast so energy is still um, very very cautious about that now on the other hand the communication services sector it's a very short tail but it is moving in the right direction into that leading quadrant and it's starting to move away from the center of the chart which is a good thing. So if we bring up that communication services chart, uh, again, this is, this is the weekly, then we see that it is now battling that overhead resistance area. Uh, it seems to be breaking it. 
and the next one is awaiting around 53 and a half. We're currently at 52.25. So there is a little bit of upside left before we hit a new resistance level. But what I really like is the break in relative strength that we see here. We, uh, the last time we spoke about communication services, we, we spoke about this long trading range that was in play for more than a year now. And it looks as if we're now finally, a, finally able to break out of that range. Um, which is supported by these RRG lines, obviously. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on this from a positive point of view, especially the short tail, which means a stable trend, which is what we're seeing here. Traveling further into the leading quadrant gives me a good um, uh, idea about the, uh, the future for communication services. Now, the other one that is interesting to watch is uh, consumer discretionary. Uh, we talked about this sector quite quite a few times, especially because of Amazon in there being such a big weight. Um, the tail of this sector right now is non-neglectable. It's, it's strong, it's traveling almost at a straight line into the leading quadrant at a strong heading. So the sector as such is definitely a good play, or I should say XLY is definitely a good play. If we bring up the chart for XLY, then that shows a nice break. This is this is early Monday morning, so don't don't be fooled. We're we're breaking out to to new highs, relatively uh, for XLY. The relative strength unmistakably strong. RRG lines following along, putting XLY inside the uh, leading quadrant. But as you know, Amazon is a big name in there, and it's pretty much dragging this sector up. So. Uh, in the back of my mind, I keep an eye on uh, RCD, which is the equal weight equivalent of this sector. And that shows me a completely different picture. Um, it is struggling with overhead resistance. It's nowhere near the recovery that we saw for XLY. So basically, uh, XLY is driven by Amazon into positive territory. This, the, the sector as such, um, has a lot more trouble and, and is a lot less uh, positive, I should say. months ago I started to play around with beta as a metric to assess risk and offense versus defense in sectors. We are all aware of the sector rotation model that's been around forever uh, in multiple versions and that shows us which sectors are usually offensive and defensive. And with everything that's been going on, not only the last couple of months, but the last couple of years, it feel, it's, it's, I think it's increasingly difficult to fit the sectors in that traditional model. So I wanted to have another look, another angle for things. And I started to play around with beta. And uh, this is the spreadsheet that I've set up. It holds the monthly data for all sectors and for SPY, and it calculates the beta for every sector. That's on this sheet, but the, uh, the summary is in the ranking sheet where we can set the period over which we calculate beta. So in this, it's, this example, it's 12 months, and that gives you this list. I can change that number to, let's say, 36, and then I can rank it again, and it shows me um, from high to low the beta value for all sectors. And in essence, a high beta means that it's a very sensitive sector. Um, so if if the market 1.87 means that if the market goes up, um, uh, energy goes up 1.1.87. Uh, if the market goes down. Uh, XLA energy goes down 1.87 and uh, utilities, which is way below, means that if the market goes up one, 
utilities only goes up 0.43 but similarly if the market goes down one utilities will only go down 0.43 so betas above one are high risk high they react much stronger and below one is defensive so offensive versus defensive we can see with 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 if you play with the values you can see that that metric changes over time a very good example is technology which here is uh over one shy just one just just one basis point but if we shift that to uh to 12 we see that technology is now way below one so um I, I read in a few articles, um, one of them had a title, uh, is technology the new defensive sector? And it, it certainly looks like that from this perspective. Now, what I wanna try to do is bring this in back in relationship with RRGs. For that, I have set up an RRG which holds, these are the, the, the 12 month rolling betas. Um, the betas for all sectors in the universe and this is a daily chart and it's a little bit of a mixed bag. There's not a very clear cut direction uh, that you can see here. Uh, that changes when you move to the, to the weekly chart. So here you see the weekly RRG with the beta values attached. And you can see that you know, the greens are the, are the high betas and the reds are the low betas. Uh, green because usually most of the time when high beta is moving that means that the market is strong and when low beta is is moving so when low beta is in leading and improving that means that the market is weak because these are the defensive sectors and when the market goes down people like to go to defensive sectors For the last couple of weeks um, you can see that all the red values are moving downward or starting to roll over while the green values are curling up. Now we, we have looked at, at energy and I told you that that is still a sector which is, which is way down uh, on the list. But you see the high value, the, the move, the big moves, when it moves, it moves very rapidly and it moves very fast and, and, and out of line with the benchmark. Just prior to the break, we spoke about XLY and how that was impacted by Amazon and how that was, I showed you the, uh, the RCD, the equal weight version of that sector. That brought me to the idea that I could do the same exercise as I've done for the cap weighted sectors for the equal weight sector. So I've, I've filled the sheet with the data for these equal weight sectors, calculated the betas, you can see that communication services is doubtful because it has only a limited number of data, but the other ones are quite good. And here I am ranking them and I compare the values with the cap weighted values. And again, here I can change this to like say 36 months and you see communication services as a problem. So if we go back to 12 months, you can see here energy is the highest all the way down to staples. But here we can see the cap weighted and here we can see the differences in the beta value. Energy is in line, so three basis points is nothing. But look at consumer discretionary, that's 0.28. That's, that's an immense, that's a big number in terms of beta. Cap weighted is 1.21 beta with Amazon included. Equal weighted, it's 1.48. Uh, which makes it a much more offensive sector than with Amazon included. So Amazon is, is the defensive stock inside consumer discretionary. But also look at financials and materials and industrials. These, these 0.15 differences are, are quite big. So these sectors are, when you look at the equal weight, a lot less offensive than they are with the cap weighted. Not yet entirely sure. I've done, I've put this together today, so I haven't had a chance to, to let it sink in and, and really work with it. But I thought I wanted to share it with you because I think these differences are worth looking at because they're pretty big. This is where I wanted to bring it to on the sector rotation model, where the idea was always to see if we could make sense of this classical sector rotation model with the beta values and as you can see, it's a mixed bag and I'm, I'm still not sure how to shuffle this around. So it's work in progress, but here you can see how the classical sector rotation model interacts with the 12 month rolling beta values. Uh, and you've got some outliers that you should probably 
look at from a different angle, so especially energy, financials, but also technology and communication services. You would expect them a little bit further to the right. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you on the beta front. Again, as usual, if you would like the spreadsheet, just send me an email and I'm happy to share it with you with the updated values. For the last bit of the show, the last segment, I want to spend some time on the pair trades that we have launched in the past. And <clears throat> in order to do that, for to track them for myself, I have set up an RRG that holds all the legs of the pair trades that are open. That's what you see here on the left hand side. And I've set up a chart list that holds the individual pair trades. And I have named them with the date that we entered or that I launched the idea in the title so I can follow them in a chronological order. <clears throat> If we start with the, the first one, that's SPY versus IEV, that's the European ETF. And let me highlight those in the RRG. So here is IEV and SPY obviously is the center of the chart uh, on this one. And we have IEV still on the left hand side. It went through a little bit of a upswing and it's now starting to roll over. As you can see, we launched this idea on the 10th of March. So it's 2020, March the 10th. And if I scroll back to March 10, we can see what actually happened. So we've got this on for quite a while already. Let me center that. And we can see how this has been behaving. And that's basically the the swings that you see here, this is the ratio of SPY versus IEV. It's a little bit of improvement. Then, you know, when IEV moves away, that's good for the pair trade because SPY is the long leg and IEV is the short leg of this trade. And it's now coming back up and starting to roll over again. <clears throat> this trend looks pretty good to me. Uh, looks as if we're breaking out, so I'm going to maintain this for a little longer, uh, especially because the RRG is rolling over. So we're, we're going to stick with the bet that the US will outperform the European market. The second pair that we've opened is XLF versus RYF that we started that on the 23rd of March. And that came when we looked at equal weight sectors versus cap weighted. And my idea at the time was that the big caps XLF was going to outperform the equal weight. So this, this basically is a bet saying that or assuming that the large cap banks would outperform uh, the smaller segment. That did not happen. I mean, the timing to get in there, obviously the breakout was very clear. The rotation at the time pretty much in favor of RYF clearly in the beginning and then since late April it started to move sideways. I, I'm, I'm going to kill this one for another reason because well for this reason and I'm running into another problem that you will see in um, the last trade that we're going to look at. So here is XLF and here is RYF. They, they've been moving sort of in tandem and XLF didn't really beat RYF. So not a big success in this one here. The third one that we had opened is XLB versus XLY. And that started on the 13th of April. And look at that, look at that date. That was a nice breakout. And if we scroll back XLB and especially XLY to the 13th of April, Then we had a nice tail down for XLY and materials shot up there, and especially in XLY. And that was the that was the Amazon effect right after that started to hook back up and basically beat XLB. It's now rolling over, rolled over, and we're heading towards the lagging quadrant while XLB is already there. So 
Axel B did it pretty good in the beginning, but that's now losing it. So we're we're nowhere near uh, something that we would like to see for a pair trade. We're we're hovering above this support level, but I don't think it's it's a trade to uh, worth to maintain because basically it, I think a pair trade should start to work relatively quickly because otherwise it's better to abandon it. So for me, it's a little bit shorter term orientated trading like swing trade type of positions and this one is not doing what we expected so we should better uh, say goodbye to it now the last trade on the list is very recently we launched that when we were looking at the seasonality for the month of may and we had a clear alignment of communication services strong on the rrg strong seasonality and we had xlf week on the RRG and week seasonality. That all happened on the 4th of May. Entered the position for the May, we discussed it later. It was, it was already earlier, but to be honest, this is when I first talked about it. Uh, it is at the moment that we break to new highs. So that is a, that is a good confirmation uh, that we saw. And if we look at the positions on the RRG right now, we see XLC in leading rolling over and we see XLF in lagging. Well, this is this is the last day. That's not a lot. That's not much. If you look at this on a weekly RRG, you will see what we've seen earlier on in the show with the overview that XLC is starting to move away from the center of the chart. Uh, XLF is way down in the lower left. It's It's curling up a little bit. But this trade is working well, so we're going to monitor this and keep an eye on it. But if you paid attention, then you'll see that the, here XLF is a short part of the trade idea. And in the XLF RYF, XLF is the long part. So if we enter here, then basically these XLF and XLF long and XLF short are canceling each other out. So in essence, in the, in the whole list, we would now be long XLC versus RYF, which is not really what we've been looking at, which brings me to uh, another thing. I got quite a few messages and emails about the pair trades. It seems to resonate with people. It's an interesting way of looking at things, not necessarily per, per se long short, but you know what's good and what's bad. And one of the suggestions came from Michael, and I'm gonna spend more time on this, is to, instead of focusing on one-on-one -on -one pairs, just create a long group and a short group. So you got like more of a portfolio approach. And that is something that I wanna go and explore a little bit further and experiment with and share with you here in Sector Spotlight. Uh, it's probably more realistic way of looking at pairs than just the one-on-ones. And it's easier to maintain because we have a group of longs and a group of shorts and not necessarily one-on-one -on -one relationship. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a little bit more time on that, hopefully uh, in next week's show. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do a new pair trade idea, I'm just going to leave it at this. Uh, so we, we keep the XLC, XLF and we, we keep the SPY IEV because they're working. The other two are not working, we're going to kill them. And then the next time we speak on pair trades, we're going to look at if we can create um, groups of longs, groups of shorts and create some sort of a long short portfolio. I haven't really figured it out yet, but that's the direction I want to go with this segment. And this was Sector Spotlight. Thank you for watching. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. And after that, on the YouTube channel of Stock Charts. If you're watching it on YouTube, please don't, please don't forget to like the video and put your comments in the box below. I will certainly respond. For now, stay safe and I hope to see you next week. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.